Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we're going to talk about the natural hump on a flower horn, also known as the cock. We're going to find out what makes them expand and what makes them contract. So this is a flower horn. Um, this hump at the front is what they're renowned for. It's called the nuptial hump. Um, it's also colloquially known as the cock. That's spelled K-O-K, -K, so there's nothing rude about it. Um, so this cock can actually expand and decrease in size um, over hours or days and a lot of people wonder what could be causing it, how does it actually work? So here's the nuptial hump, the cock that's been sliced and one side removed um, and what you can see here, this is the skin, we've got some gelatinous tissue here separated by a line of connective tissue and underneath here is where the muscular blocks are. So we're going to have a look at that down a microscope on histology section to see what all these structures are. And we've taken this section and done histology. Uh, so this here, what we're looking at is from that, that part of the fish. Here's a close up of the cock. Um, at the beginning, at the su most superficial layer is the skin epithelium. Under that is some sort of a gelatinous layer. And here's the scale of the fish. And here's your dense connective tissue. And further down from that is your fat cells. So this is quite interesting because on the body of the fish, this gelatinous part is not present. It's only present on the cock. And this gelatinous part means that the skin is actually attached not to the scale, but to this soft bit, which makes it more prone to damage. And if you get um, rough handling or anything, you can actually tear the skin and open it up for portals of infection for bacteria and things like that. So you've got to look after the cock as much as possible. So we've moved a little bit further down. So here's your dense connective tissue um, at the top of the screen now. And this is where all the action happens for the cock. What you can notice is we've got more gelatinous type tissues. We've got fibrous tissue here. We've got some blood vessels. We can see spotted around all over this place are these um, different size circular structures. So we're going to zoom in closer and have a look to see what they are. So here are these circular structures zoomed in completely and you can see they are lined by epithelial type cells. They are very flattened. Uh, the lumen contains nothing that stains, no cells. So this to me resembles lymphatic vessels. And what I suspect is that these fill up with fluid, uh, with lymph, and this is what's responsible for the swelling of the cock and also reduction in size when the fluid drains out of these. Okay, so what happens in real life is when the cock is fully inflated, these lymphatic vessels will likely be nice, bigger, and have round, full, round edges rather than the sort of collapsed look. Uh, and this myxomatous area with the elastic fibers, uh, they will be more stretched out as well. I guess in terms of this cock, it's um, reminiscent of, I guess, ret ret erectile tissue. Um, but with erectile tissue, that's actually blood engorgement. So it's uh, blood getting pumped in the tissue, causing the swelling um, and then rapid reduction um, at the end. Uh, but in this case, because they're lymphatic um, vessels, they actually take a longer time uh, to, to grow in size and a longer time as well uh, to reduce in size. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe for all our latest videos and have a fantastic week.